You know, it dawned on me today that now that I'm in a wheelchair most of my day, I can no longer be a stand-up comic again. Of course, I never was a stand-up comic, so what odds, right? <laughs> but you know what else dawned on me? And while I'm spinning around in my chair and looking at the video later, because of course you know this is like take three, I can't do something this polished and refined in one take. <laughs> uh, anyway, as I'm spinning around in my chair, I noticed this god darn big bald spot in the back of my head. I haven't seen that before. Holy sugar. Anyway, I'm going to sing a humorous song called The Woodbridge Dog Disaster, written by Royston Woods, but made popular by the late great Stan Rogers. There was an old woman from Woodbridge there was. So proper and tidy and all of them things. She would wander all day with a duster in hand. She was one of those women who clean where they stand. And while she is at it, she sings, boys. And while she is at it, she sings. Now there's no doubt about it, her house was a show. With everything proper and stowed in its place. And that's why her dustbins had a shed of their own. Like a mirror, each one of those bins it had grown. You could read every line in your face, boys. You could read every line in your face. Now, there's nothing the matter with tidiness, no. No matter with keeping your house up to scratch. But these bins were located one side of a yard where a Doberman pincer was prowling on guard. Train to kill if you lifted the latch, boys. Train to kill if you lifted the latch. Now it's all very well to protect what is yours, but it's better not leaving temptation around, for a job on the dust is rewarding enough, and there's nothing like taking the smooth with the rough. To be savaged by some bloody hound, boys, to be savaged by some bloody hound. Now this Doberman pincer would play in the yard. And a couple of old tennis balls was its game in this make-believe world of some self that he saw as the world's only dog with a bionic jaw. And that's when the garbage man came, boys. And that's when the garbage man came. Now fate played its hand on this coldest of days. For his wife she had made him to wear a warm coat, coat and to knot up his muffler to keep out the chill. And for once in his life, he had bent to her will. And the dog couldn't get at his throat, boys. And the dog couldn't get at his throat. Now when the woman above was drawn to the noise, it's down from a high chamber window she called to the dustman engaged in a struggle for life in a middle-class tone you could cut with a knife. She loudly exclaimed, kick its balls, boys. She loudly exclaimed, kick its balls. Now the dustman could scarcely believe the command, but he didn't have time to request it again. So ignoring distinctions of language in class, he unleashed a size 10 at the Doberman's ass. And its eyes missed it over with pain, boys. And its eyes missed it over with pain. You can imagine the silence that followed that blow. With the command ringing on in the poor dustman's ear, and as the poor doggy lay writhing around, you can see the two tennis balls there on the ground. And her meaning was rendered quite clear, boys. And her meaning was rendered quite clear. Now I'd like to explain that this dog was at stud, and the dustman was sued for the fees they had lost, but it's lucky he was to escape with his life. He went home with a kiss for his poor startled wife, who harangued him for what it might cost, boys, who harangued him for what it might cost. Now, if there's a moral to be gained from this song, <laughs> it's that innocent language might sometimes seem crude, and as in the case of the carpenter's mate, your linguistic enlightenment might arrive late. And you could end up getting screwed, boys. And you could end up getting screwed.